Okay. Stream is starting. Uh, yeah, the stream should be on now. Just double check and make sure it's live. Yep. It seems to be on. Hi, everybody. How are you doing? It's, it's Tangent Tuesday, and so, Christmas has arrived. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, tech... Okay, I will now... At Nevaeh the... got access to the Christmas decorations. Christmas has arrived. Yes, I would agree that Christmas is okay at this point. If you celebrate... If you start putting up Christmas decorations and doing all like the Christmas festivities and all that, okay, I can accept this. It's it's a reasonable consideration. So, um, has anyone? Oh, let me let me open up the Tangent Tuesday text chat. I was just just publishing the link. Okay, yeah. So, I don't know about anyone here, but for us. Yeah, Christmas has now started because Zoe Nevaeh. Well, if we, if we follow Christmas. Zoe's official thing, yeah, Christmas started a month ago. Uh, I think Christmas started a month and a half ago. She started doing Christmas stuff in October. So... That's right. She was doing. She, she, she wanted to before Halloween. It's like, kidding me? Uh, yeah. Which? <laughs> no. It's no go. Okay, what does that mean? Christmas okay as long as it starts at twelve a.m. What 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 is that supposed to mean? Yeah, I'm okay. We'll see. Hold up. I think I have enough flavoring left over that I can make one sparkling water drink. So I'm gonna mm -hmm. make that now. Ah, okay, so at the stroke of midnight after Thanksgiving, it's Christmas. I mean, yeah, more or less. I mean... <laughs> more or less. Yeah. I, the way I saw someone... You've got Black Friday first, which is now more just Black Week. Yeah, for, for sales in particular. Mm -hmm. Do you know the actual... I don't I don't remember them, but what what is the actual like logic behind Black Friday? Why it's such a big sale day? Because I actually don't know why. I don't, I don't even remember the origin of it. The idea of, of, of what's called Black Friday is because it gets you back into the black. When you are making a loss, you draw it with, with red pen. Yeah. When you're making profit, you draw it with black pen. And so that's that, that's the idea behind Black Friday. Get the, the profits back into the black. Um... Can't Which you, you say makes that. the oh, but that makes the line from the Incredibles makes make a bit more sense. Or tell me how you are keeping Insurake in the black. Yeah, yeah. Because that's that's what it means. In in the black means profit, not losses. Yeah. In the if you ever look at any financial stuff and it's and you see red, red is just a universal sign. Finances are bad. Mm -hmm. Bad or as I say. Yeah, it, it's it's the universal sign of bad, or we've run out of pen of of non-red pens. But that's even worse because you can't afford to buy new ones. Or you just let everyone in the office steal them all. Mm -hmm. I mean, actually, technically speaking, red doesn't necessarily mean bad. Red is just oftentimes used as a shorthand for negative. So, yeah. So on accounting documents, red doesn't necessarily mean bad. It just means a subtraction of this account in particular. Which, when we're talking about total profit for the year, you don't want it to be in red. <laughs> well, not necessarily. It, yeah, for total profit of the year. But, I mean, if you're moving, like, money from, like, uh, accounts receivable into cash, mm -hmm. that's a good thing. Yeah, it means that you're able to pay yourself. No, accounts receivable is, um, so in, in finances terms, you ever hear the term accounts receivable? Accounts receivable is money that people. This is the money that I have people that people owe me this amount of money. This is the money that I'm owed that haven't been paid yet. Mm -hmm. So like if you're doing, okay. so if you're doing any type of payment of stuff like oh I will buy this on like 
uh, on mm -hmm. like oh, I'll buy, I'll pay for you, I'll pay it for you in thirty days. It's basically the opposite of debt. Yeah, that's account. That that's accounts payable. Mm -hmm. in, in in your account, in your balance sheet, accounts payable is yeah. I gotta pay all this money. Right. You also have uh, you have there's accounts for there's accounts payable and there's technically accounts payable and loans are different things in financial terms. Mm -hmm. In financial terms, accounts payable um, is usually like short term things. Well, loans are like long term things, if I recall. It's been a while since I did accounting stuff to look it all up. But I mean, if we're if we're on the topic of of just like oh, what, what was I had a thought train of thought there of like oh we're on the topic of business stuff. Where does this go? And I like it took a it went completely off the tracks, and I have no idea what I was thinking anymore. My train just crashed. Right. What, what I tried to ask Google when is the the beginning of Christmas, and I just get the literal boring answer of the twenty fifth. <laughs> okay, Christmas type Christmas season, and we'll see if that will. Uh, that Same up. thing. When does when does the Christmas season start? It's always celebrated on the twenty fifth. Like Google, you're okay. To, Google, you're supposed to give us an answer so we can argue about it. Mm hmm. The Christmas season starts on, uh, yeah, it's like, the Christmas season starts on Christmas Day. It just doesn't. <laughs> Have oh, you yeah. been in the US for more than a year? Maybe in different countries. Because it is, it, it I is mean, like it's, a... it, it's time to, be, to begin the psychological warfare on all supermarket employees. Yeah, having listened to the same seven songs on repeat. Yep. Or if you're a radio station. I think it might be worse for radio station people. No, it's going to be worse for store people. Why store people? Because you have other noise. Radio because if you're, on the, if you're on the radio station, you're not necessarily listening to your own radio. You need to have someone there listening to make sure there's no audio issues that you need to fix. Yes, one person. It's not being bled through the entire building at all times. Yeah, what, you if, can you're trade. That, what if you're the guy who has to sit there and listen for audio issues? Again, you can trade between who is the current presenter. It's not that it's running in the building all day. Plus, it's radio. You don't loop the same song more than once an hour. It's more like once every two or three hours. I'm pretty sure... At the store, I think the store's audio loop is maybe ten minutes. I'm pretty sure this. I'm pretty sure you might be wrong about that because if you, I've, mum has put on Christmas radio and you hear the same song like once every hour or two. So it still leaves for. How long is this audio loop in supermarkets? Um, that's a really vague. Yeah, it is. But it's a bit too vague for I think for it to answer properly. Okay, Walmart. For Walmart. I, I, don't, I don't know. That feels like it's a that feels like a thing they don't advertise on like how long is the music thing. Technically, actually, besides like Christmas season things, I don't think they would really use music that that much. What what's the? I mean, there's there's a whole bunch of articles about how they 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 use that music to brainwash you. Uh, I mean. They do use. Even the you agree with it, if you and such. I'm just making it sound worse. I mean, yeah, they probably marketing. Use, yeah, it's a marketing. Market, it's a marketing thing to set a mood. Yeah, you're setting a mood. But like the five factors of background music that affect us in in the supermarket. One, the the rhythm to increase sales. Well known music for comfort. Sophisticated music to increase average spending. Soft music to keep the customers. Um, and the offers modify for the better the purchase phase. Those are yeah. those are, are are the headers of of this particular thing. Like, okay, point three is the one that might find interesting. So, if you play Mozart, people spend more. Uh, it's is 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 that why like Bed Bath and Beyond always has fancier music than Walmart? I guess if you're listening to fancier music, it makes you feel more rich. And if you're yeah, like, rich, you might then be more inclined to see if, a higher price. If you're going out in stores... Oh, no, no. Okay, what well, it probably is, has to do with a thing of prestige, right? 
Mm -hmm. If they're you're playing fancier music, this place sounds more prestigious. And if you're, something's prestigious, you're generally more likely to spend more money on it. Yeah, There's but so like high prestige. I know. Next time you you you're going out shopping in, in various stores, if you and such, um, listen to what they're playing, especially if you're going on a shopping spree and you're and you're going to go between various different stores. Compare what they've got playing. Because I'm now really, really curious as to if, like, if you go into a furniture store, if they always have higher class music, whereas Walmart and such are going to have, um, not low class, but like they're, they're going to have more comforting music, um, well, and maybe something with, or something, some, something, something with a bit of a rhythm. Yeah, more sim more simple single melodies. The, the fancy music is going to be like dramatic harmonies, like Mozart, where you've got where you've got like many orchestra, you have an entire orchestra of, sim of stuff symphonizing together compared to a couple mm -hmm. of small wind. Uh... Yeah, like you, you're you going to have something more piano, um, violin playing in Bed Bath & Beyond okay. um, as opposed to Walmart, which is just playing Jingle Bells. It's kind of scary that when you study marketing because I mean, that, that is, for people who don't know what I, what I ever major in or majoring in and I finish it, uh, I'll be finishing it uh, about this time next year is when I'll be graduating. Mm -hmm. um, but when you study marketing, you're like, oh yeah, they, they've like, they like track like all of this stuff and they try, they, they try and figure out the best, again, like music, store layout and everything that encourages people to, you know, like maybe buy a little bit more or spend more, or get attention more. Yes, because if playing that song sells 1% more, well, you paid nothing. You just, it's just that you picked the right song to play. Uh, yeah, um, there, there was a, what, where, where, I can't, I can't remember if I can find the term, but they, they have a term for like a particular type of music, which is just generic background music. And I can't remember, um, what it is. it's a weird term, it's used in advertising. Uh, let me see if I can just. Yeah, a jingle or something as well, I'm sure. Because a jingle is a different thing. A jingle is a, is a harmonic device that is used to try to bring about a brand idea um if you can establish a brand idea was this last tenant tuesday or did we talk about it off off air about the um the transition tones oh no this is this, this this was off air that was off air we talked about it over thanksgiving okay so we should we should reiterate that then in a few minutes here yeah but again like with weird advertising stuff mm -hmm. um what was going to say oh yeah the thing that you also realize is advertising is a lot more local than you think. Like, for like a region to region based area stuff. You can make sure that your mic's being picked up. Uh, it should be being picked up. I'm watching the bar go up and down. Okay. So, it, sh it should be fine. I haven't peaked it yet, but. Mm -hmm. um, you have to be really careful whenever you're doing advertising stuff for. Re for, re for global things that you don't accidentally do a couple translation errors or just do ideas that other cultures don't understand one thing really quick to check i'm apparently quite loud and you're quite quiet you might want to adjust that okay uh, uh, okay i adjusted it a bit okay let, let me see if th let me see if that works um it's the problem with not having a, a default mic position for everything yeah. Also, again, I have not adjusted my own audio much since the computer reset. So, but you, you do you do have to be careful with advertising because you don't want to have the KFC situation. Where, where which country was it? I can't remember. It was one of the Asian ones. KFC. Yeah, where they advertise their food and their their tagline, right? Finger licking mm -hmm. good does not translate well. Um... It translated to eat your fingers basically okay that was how the tagline translated and they actually published it for like a little bit until they realized what it what it actually meant yeah a direct translation of uh finger licking good into i think it was chinese Here, let me see if i can double check because this is a story i heard about like three years ago um hmm. um i could believe that that, that, that it would be Chinese? Uh, hold up. Translation for that? Like, because yeah. once you start yeah, getting into Asian languages, the, 
Yeah, the uh, the synonyms that you use in Western versus um, Eastern languages very different. Okay, well, um, technically, it was an accidental translation. I'm not sure how they accidentally did it, but they accidentally translated finger licking good into eat your fingers off. So, right. I don't think that's the right message that you want to present. I mean, it has. I'm a... just trying to look up an example from Japanese because it's, it's not. Yeah, okay. Um, I think it's. In Japanese, it's ato iyukan, something like that. Yeah. Uh, it 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 might be iyutoki. I, I I forget that. Basically, in English, we say in the blink of an eye. You do not say that in Japanese. The equivalent, but uh, um. So if you directly translate the Japanese equivalent to in the blink of an eye, it actually is in the time it's in the time it takes to say ah. Is that? That is the the direct, the direct equivalent. So it makes sense that when the, the finger licking good did not work in an Asian language. I mean, you have other ones with like, uh, like, uh, there was another one here that I seen because it really, looking at the finger licking good thing led to uh, a, a list of them. One of mm -hmm. them was Electrolux vacuum cleaners in Sweden. When they translated, when they sold them in America, what do you think their tagline was? One sec. So, 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 this was from Sweden to America? America. Yeah. Okay. We suck. Nothing sucks like an Electrolux. <laughs> <laughs> I get yep. as a vacuum cleaner, but, but saying your own brand sucks is probably not a great advertising message. Hmm. To be fair, though, some. I mean, I would. I would find that humorous. Yeah. That that one might actually work. That one could work. No, no, it wouldn't because I, I I would find it funny. I would remember your brand, but I would have that underlying uh, assumption that it's not very very high quality. Fair. Even though I know, even though I know it's a translation thing, and I've laughed at it, I would still subconsciously not think as as highly of your vacuum cleaner. Um. So yeah, you've got to be really really careful of that. Um. I mean, League of Legends. Like, I've, I, I've heard that. Like, when it comes to naming new, new champions, they have a whole bunch of people on staff all over the world, and one of their jobs is to make sure that that champion name isn't rude in some in a, a different language and that it's actually it's actually pronounceable. I don't think I've actually seen the pronunciation things for some of their earlier champions, but no, I know. But some of the the newer champions, like why why that name and not some of the name. Because that name was the one after, after being checked against all the different languages that League has played in, that one still works. Yeah. I, again, more bad translation slogans. Every car has a. This is Ford, right? Mm -hmm. Every car has a high quality body, right? Advertising yeah. the quality of the car's chassis and, and body and all that. Translated to in Belgium, every car has a high quality corpse. <laughs> okay. I mean, you can see how the translation went wrong because they used yep. they used the word body and they direct translated body. They just it didn't mean body in the sense of like a like a dead body. Yeah, because they probably have a different word for living body. Yeah, I don't know. I just like yeah. the idea of advertising a car brand now where it comes with the uh, with its own dead corpse in the back in the trunk or the boot, whatever you yep. want to call it. That's ah, uh, there's so many like terrible ads. Hmm. I still, I still think the best ones that I've seen um, are "Never Say No to Panda," "Mayhem," and um, the uh, "When You Get Bored" ads. Yeah, but again, those ads are gonna be probably quite regional based. Yes. They're, 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 yeah. They're no. Not... The the most global universal thing in the uh, thing on television is Mr. Bean. One of yeah. Yeah. Mr. Bean is popular it's, in so many different places. Because it doesn't require language. When I was in Panama for a mission trip six, six, seven years ago now, was it six, that seven was years what was ago? always on. I don't think it was that long, Caleb. Uh, it was in my first year of college, and I graduated last year. So it was like four or five years ago then. No, it was like five or six. Um, but still, 
when I went there, and you might be right. I, I, I think I had to check. Uh, I, I, I thought it was I thought it was twenty eighteen. Um, that Mr. Bean was was on. If like, it was twenty eighteen. I saw it on was, multiple times. That was four years ago. Uh, no, it was the start of twenty fourteen. So five years ago. Because at the end we at the end of twenty two now. That's still not half, six or seven. Okay, fine. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, so Mr. Bean was on a lot. Um, now they might have done that for our sake because we were a bunch of English speaking people in, in Panama that speak Spanish. But that was still Spanish TV. They just, it was just, they found Mr. Bean on Spanish TV. It was, it's still, it's still airing on um, there. It's just like, it's probably reruns, but you, you can still watch it on, on Panama TV. Yeah. Uh, the other thing you also have to be weird on is um, like like cultural advertising as well, and also cultural mm-hmm. laws. Uh, there's a lot of like differences in ha- what companies allow in advertising and don't. I mean, there's the whole um, if you ever played like any game that has like a has any type of like skull imagery, mm-hmm. all of that is prohibited in China. Yeah. 100% prohibited. So if you ever played a game that has like a skull image, it's also played in China. That that will not be in China, at all. Well, uh, like for, well, the skull won't be. They'll have changed it. Well, yeah, they they, they, they will always alter it. It's why um, I'm trying but to. That's think. the weird thing, though. Like, uh, what was it? Inside Out. Um, they changed the food that she hates. In the in the opening sequence. To different countries. I mean, that makes sense. It's like broccoli and Brussels sprouts, depending on, on where you're from. No, that makes sense because you have to get the this. If this is a global film, you're explaining to kids. Kids aren't going to know that this film is from a different country, really. That, and they're not going to, or if even if they do, they want the idea to be associated that oh, this food is terrible. How? how what idea? What food do kids in different regions associate with being terrible? Because that joke doesn't work if the food that's being used is not terrible in your region. It's considered terrible in your region. I'm just trying, trying, trying to look up what the, uh, the the different foods were in different countries. Um... Yeah, regional differences are really interesting to look at. Just just seeing uh, like a lot of different things with them. I mean, like a great series... If, uh, like video games to see like a lot of the cultural differences between America and Japan is look at the difference between the American version of the original Animal Crossing and the Japanese version of the original Animal Crossing. Because those games... I'm just looking for a Wikipedia because that's probably, probably where it will be. Those games were changed a lot uh, for the different regions. Why? Mm-hmm. Um, and, it, and like the idea of the concept of localization it's it's weird. Because some people are on, are on the opinion that you should not change anything, while right. other people are of the opinion that you should change it. You should change everything to appeal to the new culture. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's be on. And the actual right answer is: it's like most things in life, usually somewhere in the middle. Because if you don't translate anything, no one's going to understand what you're talking about. It's going to be very confusing. But if you translate everything, you are kind of like. Removing the original imp- purpose and intent of the work. So, it is a middle ground there. Uh, did we? Did you want me to um, do that thing that you uh, talk about the? Yes. Yeah, I'm just trying to find. Um, is that a, a trivia like? I don't know what you're. Broccoli. I'm just looking. Uh, I bet you I can find it faster than it's, you. Okay, so, so so apparently, I thought it was a whole bunch, but no, it's just, in Japan, it becomes green peppers. Okay. The broccoli. Um, also, there's a version where it's green bean, uh, 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 where it's like green beans. I think. No, no, it, it, it is just, 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 just green peppers. Okay. Um, one of the other differences as well, is if you recall, the dad is really into um, sports, and so um, 
one of the scenes when the wife is 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 trying to talk to him, he's just watching or or or, 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 or is is thinking about sports. In the American version, it's hockey. In the British version, it's football or soccer. That would that would make sense. It would. Is hockey a sport that's celebrated in, or that that's done in those regions? Because I know like the well, thing. Of- hockey, I think, is more just because, like, Ice. it's something that she's into as well. Yeah. But they adjust it to be football for, because that made sense to England. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah. Football, where you kick the the ball with your feet and there's no hands. That yeah, version. Yeah, not yeah, not not American football. The, just that word naming convention is so saddening because so much confusion is being brought up by the fact that Americans name their sport football, which yeah. doesn't make sense because you're allowed to pick up the ball with your hands. I don't understand mm-hmm. it. Can can, yeah. can someone explain why American football is called? Football. Because, yes, you kick the ball, but you also throw the ball. Probably because... Is it because you're... You they use it yards, America, not feet. Yeah, it's, it's because of distance, feet. But they use yards. Yes, it's all It's all the yard lines, not not, not feet, not like foot. I, so, I don't know. Hmm. It's It's weird. Okay. Um, anyway, so so we want to go back to that topic originally about uh, audio oh, jingles. Yes. Or, or, okay. okay. More like tone jingles. Do you ever watch like the news and they have like, like just like a a, a, full... a fairly hard and loud audio transition? Well, no, no, no that is less is nowadays more just used for historic precedent, and it's since it's been around so much, people have come to expect it. But it's like a mm-hmm. small like um, three note. A four note thing here. Let me see if I can find an example to play. Um, yeah. No. Uh, the only video here, I'm, the only video I found about it, no, that's an ad, uh, was how to play it. Mm-hmm. So let's see. Let's see if actually, like, I want to see if it. And sounds like yeah. like this. Yeah, so this video at 14 seconds in. that This type of jingle. I, I just know that one because NBC's one was one of the first yeah. ever made. Okay. That three-note jingle is one of the first. And so the NBC three-note jingle that you just heard, if you're listening to stream or in the chat that I put in there, that three note jingle is one of the first, uh, like, news transition jingles that they ever had. Why do you mm-hmm. think that was implemented in the first place? Caleb knows the answer because I told him earlier. But, but it was okay. Oh, let's, let me see. What, let me see. Robo's art typing. Let's see what he's gonna say. Yeah, ele- yeah. It yes. does sound like an it's actually jingle. for the same reason as an elevator as well. I don't know how I don't know what you mean by the elevator. Same reason for the elevator, but um, it's 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 the same reason. Yeah, more or less. But generally, those note transitions were: if you are trying, if you're making a radio station, right, that's trying to broadcast across the whole world or the whole country. Back in the early 1900s, you don't have mm-hmm. a radio station that's powerful enough to do a global radio thing. So you need to do bunch of intermediary hub stations you send the you send the station out to everyone around you the other person hit uh then rebroadcast the other station then rebroadcast that to their local area and it keeps going so you travel so you collect so you get the whole nation under your same news station mm-hmm. just with a little with a little bit of extra lag but with a little bit of extra lag but who's gonna care about that it's not like there's not like the person over it's, in yeah, Chicago, it's, so the it's, person over in Chicago is going to go talk to the person in California. And go, hey, why is my radio thing thirty seconds behind yours? Because you can't talk to them. Yeah, it's it's one way. There is no such thing as like. Yeah, but so you have to. So then, but to do that, it's not. Mecha- you do have to do a similar thing nowadays. You can't send the radio station signals that that. 
that far. But it's been automated by things like internet and technology and all that. When you couldn't automate it, you had to have another person uh, resend it and send the right channel link, uh, the right channels and all that type of stuff. Mm -hmm. But so the way they generally communicated it was, you would send in they what most of them had radio lines, but they also had telegram lines. With the telegram being the just just the ability to send short short messages like uh, through a telegram. So they would send the telegram line a few, like a minute or two before, like a little slightly beforehand, so that people could change over the station or the channel or whatever the work needed to be done on the radio station. Mm -hmm. However, not every intermediary radio station, like all of the other ones, I think it had like something like twenty or like twenty or thirty of them, of like major ones. Not all of them had telegrams stations they only had radio stations so they had no way of knowing that hey we're supposed to be changing this station in like two we're supposed to be, we're supposed to be changing this station so how do you solve that problem if the only way you can communicate between them quickly is by the radio is that the, you're playing yeah is is the public radio yeah it's the public radio that everyone else is listening to you can't just go mike change to station four because everyone <laughs> on everyone will hear that and it will yeah. really ruin your radio experience. So instead, what they ended up doing was they had like those three note jingles. Because you can play that at like the end of a song or the end of a bit or whatever, whatever's on the radio. And it sounds pleasant. People won't, bo won't mind too much. But it tells the radio operators, hey, you need to swap your over your thing. Mm -hmm. Press the button now, please. Yeah, it's like, hey, swap over the thing now. Now, it, now it's time to do that. So that is like the origin of those like little like three note jingles. And at this mm -hmm. point, people just pe people actually, while they made it from the practical purposes, people actually started to really like it, just because mm -hmm. oh, like that three note jingle the one that I played, the NPC one. That means that the news is about to be on, and if I hear that in the background, I can go, oh, that's the news. I can now focus on that and hear it from the start. Yeah. So, you, so yeah, and and so that's that's why I say it's it's basically the same purpose as an, as a, an elevator chime now, because the whole point is it's 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 a, it's a simple audio cue that's nice to hear, that tells you something that something that you want to know has has always about to occur, like the elevator is here or the news is on. Yeah. And this goes back to a, um, a sort of design concept that you hear talked about quite a lot, which is uh, this, the idea of accessibility features or just extra features, mm -hmm. including something. So an accessibility feature is like ramps or whatever, or like curbside, like that's considered like an accessibility feature. Any feature that's designed to help, uh, like, like for buildings, it's like people who are on wheelchairs and all that. Yeah, yeah. It's it's for, for buildings. It's it's going to be wheelchair and blind. People um, on the internet, it's often blind and deaf, and also um, colorblind sometimes. Yeah, and it's it's stuff to help those type of people. But the thing is, some people look at it and go, "Design? Why am I going to design this for those particular group of people?" Which one, not the best mindset to have. Two, whenever you design an accessibility feature, it doesn't only help those groups of people right. that that it was originally designed for. So, for example. The curbside, like on streets around all of cities, right? They added instead of it being a drop off of the cur like between the two roads, instead of it being a drop off of the curb, they made it a small ramp so that wheelchairs and stuff could go up and down them. Mm -hmm. That, while it was used for wheelchairs, is really useful for delivery people and other types of moving people because you can wheel sack barrels up and down it super easily. Yep. So now yeah, it's super practical. Anything thing. on wheels can easily stuff with like you put various bumps and such on it that blind people can use to navigate. Yeah. That's less helpful for regular people, but it's still it once you once you know about it, it can it, it, it can be helpful. I think the least useful is it is gonna be like where you have braille on the wall. But that's just that's that's just just necessary. Yeah, and also, um, it doesn't really... If you're going to have to, like, decorate that, well, it doesn't cost too much more to make it have Braille on it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's not... All it takes is a bit of thoughtfulness. It doesn't really ha have anything else to 
really uh, uh, really worry about. Um, but like stuff like the uh, the disabled um, wheelchair buttons uh, by the door at say the post office. Like okay, for the most part, that's so the people in in wheelchairs can open the door. But what if you know you are a someone carrying a bunch of boxes for delivery, and you haven't got a spare hand to open the door? You can just ram your butt up against the, your, your, butt your up against the button and still get yeah, in. Or your elbow or something like that, and you can open the door that way. Except, mm -hmm. so it's is, still useful. Yeah. No, that's the thing. It's like accessibility features, while they are meant to help particular groups of people, they help everyone as well. Mm -hmm. Which is why you should design them. It's why, like, colorblind mode, like, making your, like, if you're designing anything for computer or for, like, digit visual stuff, colorblind stuff, making it usable by color for people with uh, certain types of colorblindness. We, we, we have talked about this. Colorblind mode is one of those double edged swords in video games because, yeah. in many cases, colorblind mode can be an unfair advantage. So, such that people just turn it on because it's better. Uh, yeah, I did this when I played uh, a first-person shooter game. Uh, the enemies all had an outline, and red outline was hard. Was like there were some maps where the maps were more like red or dusty orange, which made it hard to mm -hmm. notice at first. So I just set myself to like the yellow color blindness mode, so that way all the enemies had this garishly like yuck, like yuck pea yellow. But it was really yeah. obvious, and no one it would never be confused of anything else on the map. So if I saw P yellow, I knew to shoot at it. Yeah. So, hey, I mean, it worked. If you design, mm -hmm. if you design your game with it ahead of time, it's fine. It just makes adding stuff back can be difficult. Well, it... it just means that for for a game where that's relevant, you want to make sure that the game doesn't rely on. Uh, colors for camouflage and such, because that makes things kind of iffy for people with with, with vision problems. Uh, now, to be yeah. fair, making a first-person shooter work for the blind, okay, yeah, not gonna happen. I mean, there is some, that, yeah. I mean, there's a guy, there's a guy out there who plays um, competitive Street Fighter, and he's fully blind. He yes, but that's not a shooter. Yeah, Yo, you're, you're right. It's not. But yeah. it's possible. The accessibility features of just like stereo audio and all that just help. Mm -hmm. I mean, I should, I should, should check if it's on sale on Steam. I, like, well, the Steam sale the, ended like today, earlier. Uh, no, yeah, it might have. But like, there's a game that I heard of a while ago called Screen Sheet. Uh, ah, and this is yeah. more if you're older, so my age. You will remember the days of playing four-player split-screen and being very upset with your friends for screen-looking um, and cheating by by looking at your screen. Um, uh, you don't get that nowadays. Vovo knows the pain of screen-looking. You know, Vovo it's weird a lot of... Uh, he's, so, oh, he's repeating so the word pain. Screen sheet is a modern... I say modern, it's from, it's from 2014, where that's the entire point of the game. Everybody is invisible, and the only way you can find out where they are is by screen-looking at them. I just like how w we use that term so casually, screen looking. If no one, I terminology right for certain yeah. things is dumb. It makes yeah. complete sense, but if you're not part of that community that uses it, it is dumb, and it makes yeah. no sense. Especially if you ever use uh, TLAs. So wait, there's so many ah. TLAs. Yes, way too many. Yeah, there's so many TLAs, and the fact is, anyone who's listening to this now. You have no. You probably have no idea what TLAs are. Mm -hmm. Three-letter acronym. <laughs> yeah, it's just a abbreviation for three-letter acronyms. But if you don't know what that means, this proves the point mm -hmm. that three-letter acronyms have problems. Yeah. But I mean, and, and, and there's also four-letter acronyms. Like I have used so many acronyms um, recently. Now it's like, yeah, we got the IG and the SS. And the SSM and the SDKNO and the uh, and, and the PLP. It's like, yep. All these different acronyms that mean things that only mean things in the context of other people that you do. That you're talking uh, yeah, about. like yeah. So like another one there, Robert pointed out the FBI, the Federal Bureau of, of Investigation. That's what the FBI stands for. Well, actually, TLA can also mean three-letter agency. Uh 
was the CIA Central Intelligence Invest Agency? A agency? Central Intelligence Agency, yes. Yeah, I think it's that's what I think it's what CIA. FBI is, is right. the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Um, USN is the U.S. Navy. USAF is the U.S. Air Force. The USP is United States Postal. Actually, no, no, UPS. Sorry, I U keep saying U USP. UPS is United States Postal Service. Yeah, and UPS. USPS is the U is <laughs> no. USPS is the United States Postal Service. Okay, yeah, yeah. There's also a gun called the USPS because I. That's. Yeah. There's also uh, one called the USP. Uh, yeah. Um, but yes, yeah, so you, you have all these different acronyms. Then you've also got so if you've ever looked at ship names, uh, the 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 HMS Eagle or the USS Midway. As nice as those sound, they're really boring. USS is just it's just United States ship. HMS is Her Majesty's ship. Her Majesty. Well, no, is that would that be changed now? Isn't it now His no, Majesty's ship? Because it, yeah, yeah, but it's it's still HMS. It's still HMS, but now, but it's now His Majesty's ship. Yes. Which is that's going to be weird. It'll take a while for people to not call it Her Majesty's ship. But yeah, a lot of these. Uh, the English version of the FBI is MI six. MI six would be CIA. I'm not uh, sure what their version of, of, of the of the FBI is. Uh, Scotland Yard, right? Yeah, but I don't know what the acronym would be. I mean, yeah, it'd probably just be the Scotland Yard. So, well, because no, Scotland Yard, Scotland Yard is actually, I think, a military, um, like training facility, more or less the Pentagon. I don't not know. Quite, I actually but... don't know much about Scotland. Maybe it's something to look up. It's like the history of the Scotland Yard and, the M and is it MI6? I mean, I, I know it gives you no, that's the Pentagon as well. I was going to say plus two experience per uh, <laughs> per unit, but that's, that's not how that works. Civ 4, is this Civ 4 reference? I think it was Civ 4, yeah. Civ 4, it, I, know you actually, could, I know you could actually, build Scotland it, Yard. In Scotland Yard, you could, yeah. it, you could build the... Yeah, but it but it gave you a free spy. Yeah, yeah, that's what it did. Uh, uh, the, yeah, it's like... Just be aware. No that, idea what C4 is. C4? Mm-hmm. I don't actually... Yeah, there be I... something with... No. What, what is C4 as far as the acronym? Like, because... Is it just four Cs? Is that... Is... Yeah. Because, uh, 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 like... Um... Because... What's the example? I, I'm thinking of, of, of S3 from, from Amazon Web Services, which stands for Simple Storage Service. But there's also WC3, is it? No. No. The 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 W3C, when you're dealing with... Uh, um, it's it's a internet agency, or not agency, but it's a... It stands for the World Wide Web, Con uh, the World Wide Web Consortium, W3C. Yeah, I'm but trying to think. The C in in C form is Claymore. I'm trying to find it because I, when I looked up C four, C four meaning C four stands for Command Control Communication and Comp and Computers, but I don't think that's C form related to the explosive. I think it's a different type of C four. Yeah. Well, no, C4, yeah. I'm pretty sure, just means it's four things with a C. It's, yeah, this, is C4? This, is, this is why acronyms are weird. They make sense to use because no one wants to type the same thing. If you're, if you're writing up a documentation and you want to type yeah. it or say the same thing over and over and over again. It's just composition four. Is it just composition four? It's the four, yeah. It's, it's like version it's, four it's of something. Explosive that they composition were four. Okay, they had four other. They had so your what happened to C one, C two, and C three is a real question, and it's yes. they were not as good at going boom as C one, C two, or C, or, or they weren't as good as C four at going boom, or they went boom when you didn't want them to go boom. See, here's what's more confusing. I saw a thing on Google which is what is C two versus C four, and it. And I'm going to start reading it. The C4 has a bit more padding. The C2 model is the only bed that doesn't have any comfort foam layer above the airbed. Like, oh, okay, this isn't talking about explosives. Yeah, that, that, 
when you hear acronyms. Like, for example, I was I had this issue when I was talking to people on Gamed. Uh, when I was on the service, you were talking about Gamed. If they hold up, um, let, let me hold. Oh, let me think it. Uh, I'm trying to remember what the acronym was. Let, let me see. It was TLZBW or something like that. I think was I think what was used. Or it was B. Too lazy. Something. Big old. No, weasel. T L Z B O W. Okay. Which. Tender love and zoinks. No, it was just the abbreviation they were using to type the Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Oh. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, they, okay. They, they might. I don't remember if. I don't remember if they did the TLZ thing, but I think they just took that. No, they just did this. They were just doing B O W. That. B O T W. Yeah, and then there's also that for Wind Waker. Yeah, but it's like... Often you do a, a lowercase o for that. It's like, acronym, pe communities start developing acronyms for things. But anyone outside of that community has no idea what that's talking about. Yep. And also, yeah, and different, like, it's, the it's, same it's... three letters, or four letters, or five letters, however many letters your acronym is, can have different meanings in different communities. C4, for example, it's really, really hard to figure it out because when you put in C4 into Google, you get many different C4s. Yeah. Like, C4 can also be used in, I think, certain language learning apps and such. C4 is a, um, is a level. There are C4 and C3 class plants for farming, I think. There's yep. just many, many C4s. You also have C3PO. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you... Oh, that took me a second. How <laughs> dare you? <laughs> I, was, I was hoping it would take you a bit to figure that out. If I delayed it a little bit. There's also an energy drink called C4. Yeah, acronyms... Okay. The reason I'm bringing this point up, my dad has gotten on my case about uh, about me on this before, and this is where the TLA things come from. The three letter acronyms mm -hmm. is you're it's like you guys are using way too many TLAs. Yep. Because at some point, if you only speak in TLAs, no one has any idea what you're talking about unless you know exactly, unless you're like in exactly the exact audience participation. So if you ever write mm -hmm. documents and you use tons of TLAs. It can be really confusing to find the information you want because you might find the section you're reading that you want to read and there's a bunch of TLAs and you've got to go find where they were used first because usually when any documentation, like if you're doing school papers or you're reading like mm. uh, peer-reviewed studies, the, the first time they use the acronym, they'll tell you what it means. But yes. after that point, they won't. And then you yeah. can see what... That's, that's the entire reason for having an appendix. Yes. And it's an... The whole idea of an appendix is because t t TLAs are so useful, but they're also mm -hmm. such a pain. <laughs> no one wants to deal with it. Like, hold on, let me see if I can find any TLAs in the appendix of my textbook. There's going to be a <laughs> bunch of them. Yeah. Glossary. Let's see. Uh, AOR, Agency of Record. Yeah, I would not know that. AQH, AQH RTG, AQH SHR, the BBB. I mean, RTG miss, to me means nuclear reactor because the Martian. Average quarter hour rating is what they use. I don't know why RTG is part of it for rating. So I don't know why they just do AQHR. Yeah, RTG is just rating. Well, yeah, no, but they but they are using the abbreviation AQH as average quarter hour, and then rating is RTG. I don't okay. get it. Okay, no, I can sort of get it because I have a basic. Cause you have basic average quarter hour, average quarter hour rating, and average quarter hour share. <laughs> which, by the way, for your information, average quarter hour is. Why are you mean? Um, 
is the av is the number of times the average household reached by a media schedule is exposed to a media vehicle over a specified period. That makes no sense. But to simplify it, it's how often does does our media presentation get seen by this person, this household, over the period right. of also a set to correct time. you, you should have said BTW FYI. <laughs> yes, <laughs> BTW FYI. Oh, it's terrible. Um, Welcome see, to modern Where textbook. is... Yeah, like, the one that I know a ton about, because I see it all the time in my in my marketing class, is a CPM. CPM gets okay. used all the time. What do you guys think CPM stands for? Content Product Management. Nope. I'm... I'm, I'm, I'm Okay, CPR is a different thing, and CPR stands for, I think it's like chess. It's like, comp what does CPR actually stand for now? I don't remember. It's it's something, 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 resuscitation. Cardio. I'm not going to try and pronounce this. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cardio pneumonium something. Resuscitation. Okay, cardiopulmonary resusc resuscitation. I think cardiopulmonary is a big fancy word for hitting them in the chest. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so C CPM is cost per thousand. Pulmonary means... Oh, okay. Pulmonary literally means relating to the lungs. So cardiopulmonary is just heart and lung resuscitation. Yeah. So going back Literally, to whack on their heart and put air in their lungs. That yeah. is what, okay, it, it, it's not actually a very creative name. Nothing, none of this stuff is ever creative. It's no. all just really basically just using fancy words for it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so like going back to the whole like CPM thing. CPM is just cost per thousand. It's how much money does it cost for your advertising? How much money does this particular advertising thing cost you for to get a thousand viewers? Mm -hmm. That's what it means. So you compare so CPM rates between radio... Mm -hmm. Uh, magazines, uh, like internet advertisements. So, so CPM is that cost per million? Yes, no, the cost per thousand. Okay. They, I think, are using the Roman numeral M. Oh, cost per mega. Okay. Yeah. So cost per mega person, because that's what they're going to be using. Okay. Yeah, so that's what CPM is. Cost per thousand. You also have cost uh, CPO, which is cost per order, which is. Uh, yeah. Okay, and which, then also PPM, yeah. which okay. is a completely different field. That's a completely different field. I have no idea what that one means. Parts per million. Uh, I don't know about that one, Robo. Uh, yeah, no but, idea. I yeah, mean, but, this way, you can probably get sued for using CPR in any country. Because most of the time, CPR, if you do CPR on someone who's not needing CPR and is actually awake, that's called assault. Yeah. You're, you're on top of them, whacking them in the chest and essentially b blowing air into their mouth. Like, that's a little bit invasive. Yeah, also, te technically speaking, whenever you perform CPR, it is one of those... CPR quite often results in broken or cracked ribs. That's an interesting yeah. feature. No, no. But C doing CPR is not protected if they were awake and conscious at the time and didn't need it. Yeah, you can't you can't go justify that I punched someone in the chest really hard. What was my defense? I was doing, I was doing CPR, CPR. Not greatly, but I was doing CPR. You can't use that as a legal defense. It doesn't work. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you can see one weird law stuff like that with loopholes. But going back to the th TLA things, because again, I've been using TLA here because I don't want to say th three letter acronyms every single time. Do you <laughs> want to type out for CRM, which is Customer Relationship Management? Customer Relationship well, Management. I'll give you an example from programming that I had forgotten was a thing until I saw it in some, some documentation I was reading last week. I18N. No idea what that means. It's international. It's internationalization. But because we can't be bothered to type all the letters in the middle, we do I eighteen N. Right, you just I eighteen letters and then N. Yeah. 
<laughs> okay, it works. It works. It's, it's that instead of that. <laughs> yeah. It's just shorthand. That that is what TLA. That's what. But I was working like. on a piece of code where the method call was i eating in. Like, what is this? Oh, oh, that's what that is. Yeah, but if you don't know what that means, you just sit there and be confused. And if you don't have a guide or a place you can look it up, what do you do? Yeah. You've got you're given this document, and there's like, oh, i eighteen n. What? And you have no way of looking up what the answer is, and the book and the, whatever you're reading doesn't have the code reading doesn't have anything in it. How does know what that means? It looks like, it looks like a math a math equation that I got wrong. <laughs> yeah. So, be just be aware. Three letter acronyms very useful, but you have to understand your audience. If you're talking to someone who's not part of your field or part of your group that knows all your three letter acronyms, you can't just use them. You're gonna mm -hmm. probably have to use what they actually mean. I just think about having a chat with someone a, a few months ago, and they were using some acronyms, and I was like, "So that that so when you say SA, do you mean A or B?" And her answer was, "Neither. I mean C." <laughs> yeah. Like, it, oh, okay. <laughs> it really gets confusing, especially especially if the two acronyms are close enough together that. The sentence that someone said could make sense for both of them, but they have different meanings. Because then one mm. person might go away thinking, oh, I knew that person was talking about. Uh, was I think in that context, it was Solution Architect. I forget now exactly which one it was. Yeah, but if I go away thinking, oh, they meant this, and I completely believe that because it made sense in the context, sort of made sense in the context of their sentence, but they meant a completely different thing, and they thought that I understood them perfectly... That can be really bad. Mm -hmm. So just be aware that you should clarify when using TLAs. Because again, I'm going to keep using TLAs because I've established it with you guys now and I've clarified it. But if you go and talk to someone right now after this, after Tandy Tuesday and go say, and go start talking about TLAs being a pain, you have to be careful of them. Are they going right. to understand what you're talking about at all? Because yeah, I mean, like, you know what else TLA some... stands for? That, I get, that I've heard used a lot? Oh, I, I I've heard used at other completely different online communities. No, nope. the last Airbender. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. People use TLA as an abbreviation for the last Airbender. If you're talking about Avatar: The Last Airbender, sometimes people will just use either TLA or ATLA. Yeah, or maybe they they should just do TGO for the good one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's like. People just write that, and they kind of expect you to know if you're not mm -hmm. careful. Now, to be fair, if you're in a community that's talking about, like, animated shows, most people will probably be able to work out what you're talking about. Because they have a context of what this area is related to, or based on <laughs> where, you're, based on the context of the discussion. But even then, it can be very confusing. So... If you guys can think of any like dumb acronyms you hear quite often that you've just kind of accepted that have caused confusion, now is a great time to share them. Yeah, so I'm just gonna say that's what I'm gonna title the uh, 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 this episode. <laughs> just, yes, just, just yes, that's perfect. <laughs> that's W D Y M I D K. What T L A's are. <laughs> Okay, and for anyone who doesn't know what those are based on our connotations, you can hear at the end of the episode, what the title of this episode is, is what do you mean I don't know what three-letter acronyms are? <laughs> yep. So... Yeah, because, welcome. Uh... I mean, what do we start the discussion with? Because I don't know how we got to here. Christmas. And okay! Somehow we got here, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the joys of Tangent Tuesday, where we don't even know where this is going to go. That's why I didn't title oh, this Oh, yeah, yeah. The fear, the fear of, of long words. Hippomonstrosis quipitaliophobia. My favourite <laughs> word. Yeah. Well, that followed by defenestration. Defe yeah, defenestration is another great word. Mm -hmm. 
Oh no, 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 that's why I love the word so much. I bet you, <laughs> I bet you, someone. I don't think it's a, it's not a real word. It's a word that someone made because it sounded funny. I, yeah, it's I kind of want to break it down. It might actually be based like you break down the origins of each like hippomonstrosis, quipidalia, phobia, because quipidalia definitely is like quip is a type of like word thing. Phobia, yeah, fear. Yeah, it's, it's just merging together as many word roots as you can to get that meaning. Yes, you're just doing the longest hippo. Does hippo just mean large? Hippo monstrosis. Hippo, hippo, hippo monstrosis. Hippo large monstrous. Is it? Is it monstrosis or monstralis? Hip. I okay. You make me confused. Hip. I am because hippo could be big. Monstro could also be monstrous. You just shoved together two different prefixes. That Here, be big. Here's the word for you. Hippo monstrosis quipidaliophobia. Okay. Yeah, by the way, I don't know if we actually said it out loud what hippomonstrosis crypidaliophobia is. It is the phobia slash fear of long words. <laughs> Which yeah. are based you can see the irony. I don't I hope I don't need to explain it to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly, <laughs> Robo. Someone someone made that up. Someone heard about someone made up a random phobia. And like, okay, let's make this I, I phobia have the most ironic name as possible. I because I doubt anyone. I doubt this is a real thing at all. This is just a joke that someone made. Yep. Hold up, wait, wait, wait. There's 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 a Wikipedia article about this. It's just got the pronunciation. <laughs> Nothing more. Yes, it's a word. There we go. Anyway, we need to call it there. Uh, let me double check a thing. Like, it's so weird. That Christmas is so close. We only have three more Tenet Tuesdays and then it's Christmas. Uh, wait, Are you on. kidding me? Do we need to look in December? Are there any Tuesdays we, we might... We won't be doing Tenet Tuesday on, on the 27th. Yeah, we probably yeah we won't, probably won't be doing a Tenet Tuesday on the 27th. Because that's like... Because Christmas. Yeah, we want that. We kind of want that, like, week after Christmas to be a chill week, or not do. We probably won't be running events on that week. Uh, we might do. We, yeah, we, we we will be doing one probably on the Friday. Yeah. For the we'll game night. Yeah. Actually, actually, I'll, I'll, uh, we'll talk to Mizuki. We might run two game nights that week, and that do, uh, and that just be the uh, e the events we do. Yeah, we'll have to, we'll have to see. Yeah. So. All right. Well, thank you all for coming, and we will see you all next week.